Richard Risbrood of the Hillcrest Comets is joining us this morning for a recap of last night's Hillcrest Underwood game. 32 to 6, the final score. The Comets with the victory went in and spoiled the Rockets homecoming. I know uh, teams always enjoy doing that. They don't enjoy having it done to them, and I, I know that's happened in the past too, but um, fun to go over and, and beat someone on homecoming night, but I think you showed again that this team of yours, Coach, has that explosive capability because 7-6 halftime and third quarter, you, you had a couple of big plays and broke it open. Yeah, it was really a good game for us, Craig. Uh, you know, with uh, the teams that we have each year at Hillcrest, uh, a number of first-year football players coming out, it, uh, it takes us a while to take and gel as a team, to take and uh, get everybody used to our offense. And uh, they really came together last night, and uh, it, uh, it was just really a good football game for us and a great win for our program. Well, I saw, uh, what, Evan Newman had a 66-yard touchdown run and a 60-yard touchdown run, and I guess that's uh, it's become rare when you have a game where there isn't a big play like that or a big play or two. Well, we know that, uh, you know, both Newman and Folden uh, have the, uh, you know, the, the big play capability, and uh, same with our passing game, but... It, uh, it opened it up in the third quarter there with the long runs, but uh, you know it was a it was a very hard hitting football game. It's, you know in the first quarter um, we elected to receive and and didn't move the ball that well in our first series and punted, and then, then they just took the ball and uh, just powered the football down uh, the field and scored and went ahead six nothing, and then we uh, you know made some adjustments on defense. Uh, we moved uh, Brooksy Walter to the other side and then brought in Ryan Voster, and that was really a key to the game, Craig. We put uh, Voster against Matt Mark, and, and I think, uh, uh, you know, really did a good job there in the line of scrimmage. We're really proud of the way those guys played up front. So you, uh, you thought it was pretty even on the trenches uh, early on or after that first try? Well, after the first quarter, it was pretty even. I know uh, yards rushing in the first quarter, they had, uh, you know, 75 to 85 yards rushing, and I think uh, that equaled their... Uh, they had about that same amount in the final three quarters. Uh, had some had some good gainers, but then you know with the quarterback sacks and so on and negative yardage. So um, I was pleased with our defense how they really came around there and uh, you know from the after start of the second quarter and on and and uh, you know after we scored that first touchdown uh, with a, a strike to uh, Michael Levang, um, 35 yard and uh, well he had a one pass for 35 yard, but the touchdown was a 12-yard uh, pass, um, and then we kicked the extra point. Um, I think our guys started to believe at that point that we could play with them and, and uh, you know, maintain to do so the rest of the game. David Selvig got a 100-yard passing night for you, and he sure has come on and throwed the ball well. Well, David was 5-for-9 uh, passing last night for 101 yards, and he had, uh, you know, the one touchdown pass that we mentioned to Mike Levang. And, Craig, it's been... As far as our records, anyway, it's been, we think it's been close to 10 years since the last time we beat Underwood. And uh, our quarterback at that time was Brent Martinson, um, who uh, quarterbacked our team the state championship game. And uh, that's David Selvig's uncle, and uh, so that's a good memory for us. And uh, Brent came up from Minneapolis last night to watch us play, and, and uh, so it was a, a, good, a good family tradition there with uh, Brent coming up and watching David. Um, Evan Newman's runs uh, were big, uh, 66 yard and, and, 60, and 60 yards, and really, uh, you know, game openers is what they were. Uh, but we also, uh, you know, for the first time last night, Craig kicked two field goals. And That's uh, the first time you've ever done that in the, the game? First, well, it's the first time we ever tried it, as far as, uh, wow. as, far as I remember. Um, we, did, we have tried it in other games in the past, but we, uh, you know, we uh, looked at Evan Newman's foot this past week and decided, hey, he can kick it to the uprights. And so uh, we worked on our blocking, and, and he kicked. I know our, our, uh, our Mark had it down for a 19-yard field goal and a 28-yard 20 field goal. But, I, you know, if you kick the extra point from the, you know, put the ball in the three-yard line and kick it from the 10-yard line, that's a 20-yard field right. goal. And I know they were longer than that, so I wonder if he was off by 10. I'm thinking it was a 29-yard field goal in the 38, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, that's not official, but anyway, they were good kicks, and that really pumped us up. That gave us a lot of momentum with those extra kicks, and so the two field goals gave us, uh, you know, the equivalent of a touchdown. And that, you know, that has always, to me, especially at the high school level, seemed to be one of the toughest things to pull off. I mean, um, first of all, 
you have to have a good center snap. You have to have the blocking in place. You have to, the holder has to get the snap, put it down in a position where the kicker can comfortably approach it and with his timing on and kick it and get it between those two uprights. I mean, that's a lot of things to do in a short amount of time. Right, and then Underwood's an excellent defense. Yeah. Now they're coming in to try and block it. And the guy that snapped our, our punts last night and also our snaps through our field goal is David Folden, the other running back. And uh, he's a shifty runner. Uh, he's, he's a game breaker. He had a touchdown last night. And uh, pleased with the way he's coming around, playing for us on defense, and and uh, so he played a key role in there, you know, during those field goals and and our punts. So we give David a lot of credit on that. Um, one other guy that I thought I'm just going to talk about some guys here to, today, Craig, because it really was it was it was a team effort, and I you know individually I it was just so easy to write something up about each of these guys because they all played a part. Jay Estebo uh, on, on defense uh, had a number of hard hits, and uh, he's really tough on the kickoff. He runs down there and sprints down there and makes a tackle, and he goes out on every play. He also caught a pass uh, last night uh, that was uh, brought us down towards the goal line, a 21-yarder from, from David Selvig, and he plays the right tight end spot. And so he's improving for every game. And uh, the other linebacker last night that I thought did a good job was Mario Facone. Um, he's very aggressive on defense and, uh, you know, a good team motivator for us. And he was in a number of tackles last night and had some hard hits. And uh, we mentioned Ryan, Vos Ryan Voster. He's a junior in his first year of playing for us. And uh, we put him in the defensive line. And, and uh, I thought it, he was a key to the game. He really was because he played tough on line of scrimmage. And uh, it's a, Ryan is a kid that we feel has really found a home at Hillcrest and uh, just loves the sport of football, talks about it a lot, and wants to do well. And uh, we're just real glad to have Ryan with us. Uh, we mentioned on the other side then Brooks Walters uh, had a good game for us. He's one of our captains. Uh, offensively and defensively, he did a good job. And uh, he knows Coach Link from the high school, was a spy teacher, and so they kind of like to have a good time back and forth. So Brooks really enjoyed winning last night. And in the mid, other, other guy in the middle was uh, Peter Swenson, and Peter is, is really a guy that can play anywhere for us. Um, <clears throat> he goes about 165, 170 pounds. He's a junior, and, and uh, I, as far as center, where I think of Peter, I think of a guy that can block uh, with, uh, with excellent technique. He keeps his head up. He does a good job of picking up the blitz, and, uh, you know, when they were coming last night, he was right there to pick them up, and so that was really a key for, uh, for us to have Peter with uh, his good blocking on the inside. Um, Ryan Norlin on the, our flanker and also plays cornerback for us on defense. He had a great game. He caught an Evan Newman halfback pass, and uh, that was for that was for 21 yards as well. And that also was a good uh, a good break for us, and uh, that led to a score. And Ryan was the guy at a flanker that had some good key blocks for us on Evan Newman's run and also for David Folden's run around the left side for that touchdown. Um, I just got two other guys I got to mention, and that's uh, Michael Levang. And I know I made a, <clears throat> a comment, Craig, in the Daily Journal that I thought Charlotte Jacobson was one of the best cornerbacks in the conference. And I still believe that. He comes up and he's a good hard hitter. Um, but I'd have to also say that, you know, Michael Levang, you know, is one of the best defensive ends in the conference, uh, even uh, offensive ends as well. He already has more touchdowns at an end uh, and re than any other receiver around in the area. Um, he's an excellent blocker. Uh, and on defense, uh, you know, I think of him as a tree stump because he's just very difficult to run on Michael's side. We put him on the wide side of the field, and so if they want to get yards and go around the outside, they got to take and get around Michael. And uh, another, uh, uh, we got Ryan Erkenbrack as well. You know, his dad, Dean, is our assistant football coach, and uh, he's only a sophomore. He's a good hitter. He can play linebacker. He can play Andy <clears throat> in the Wheaton game. We put, we put him in the line. And uh, we put him anywhere where he's needed, and he's willing to play there. He had a number of tackles, and uh, he runs in the play for us along with Jay Estebo. And so, uh, you know, I, I had to mention these guys, Craig, because it was an all-out team effort. It was a great win for us, and, and I know it was, a, it was tough for Underwood to lose that game, but it was really a great game for us, and our guys are really pumped up for it. Really proud of the way they played last night. Well, mentioning all the individuals there, you know, it takes individuals to make a team, and you put all that effort together, and, well, you have a successful night. Well, in a great game like that, I just didn't want to... I hope I, I didn't miss anybody, but uh, we had some, uh, even the guys in the JV that got out there, ran a few plays. Uh, John Berge uh, did a good job at quarterback when he was out there. Uh, Matt Jordan ran the ball hard, and, and uh, when he got the ball, and uh, 
there was just uh, <clears throat> there were some also turnovers in the game and and uh, that led to scores and uh, we had them we had them down for uh, uh, some turnovers uh, three fumbles and then they lost all three so that was key um, but uh, we didn't get any interceptions so our uh, you know I was really pleased the way the defense played and and uh, you know it may be cloudy today Craig but uh, the sun's going to shine all day at Hillcrest <laughs> all right big win for the uh, Hillcrest Comets and especially when you look at going into homecoming week too well it's going to be uh, a, a great week for us and hopefully we'll have a great week of practice we got Hancock coming up and uh, we know that they are a really tough football team and and uh, they managed to squeak out a win against Underwood 26 to 20 I think it was and I think they were missing one of their one of their better players in the backfield in that game as well so um, and he's back now so they're gonna you know we're gonna try to whip get out the Hancock tape from last year and uh, and try to diagram some of their plays on offense because they send a lot of guys in motion and uh, they do a lot of dilly dallying around and their halfbacks are, are hard runners uh, in defense the defensively they switch defenses a lot and they come at you from all directions so uh, we're going to have to really be ready for that game because we know it's going to be tough for us. Well, we'll look forward to that one at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Last night, they beat the Herman Norcross at the same score you had, 32-6, to six, the final in their game last night. Well, Coach, congratulations on uh, the victory. Thanks a lot, Craig. It was really, uh, it was fun. Uh, didn't get, uh, we got a lot of bags under our eyes this morning because we didn't sleep very good last night because even, you know, if we were lost, we'd have, we'd have thought about every play. Uh, uh, we, uh, we like to think of it uh, the second half as uh, as being our homecoming because Craig, we uh, we literally have when we play Underwood have fans coming from halfway around the world. <laughs> so, uh, we uh, we had a missionaries last night there from Africa. Is so that right? They were from halfway around the world watching uh, their son Micah play, uh, get in there on a, on a few plays, and uh, so we have a lot of alumni that come back and and give us a lot of support. So really appreciate that. And uh, just one other thing, I uh, I got to thank you, Craig, for. Uh, buying some candy for my daughter Lindsay oh she sure came no problem the other day and, <laughs> and uh and also she brought the the candy box to the game last night and even sold the candy bar to Mrs. Link all right so we thank all Mary right. for <laughs> supporting all right. my daughter's school appreciate that that's great well we appreciate your coming in this morning coach and good luck on Friday thanks Craig <laughs>